Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Monday, July 1st, 2019. The time is 2 a.m. It's a quick update tonight. I want to bring you some breaking news. Guadalajara, Mexico, amazing hail. Not only that, we have amazing tornadoes and amazing pyroclastic flows. Keep calm. It's boom time, kids. baseball size hail hits eastern Montana. Thunderstorm threat continues into the week. Whew. Did you hear about this? Thursday, there was baseball size hail. And then I looked here, and they barely were holding lemons. Can we end the fear-mongering? These are the facts. Guadalajara, Mexico, buried in meters of hail. Mexican city struck by rare, massive hailstorm. Just updated. A woman and child walk on the ice in the eastern area of Guadalajara in the Mexican state of Jalisco on June 30th. Just hours ago, this happened. Absolutely fantastic. The accumulation of hail in the streets of Guadalajara buried vehicles and damaged homes. And we're about... To look at some pictures, which are amazing. Look at that shit. It's like, looks like cocaine everywhere or something. Look at that. It's 90 degrees and these federales are pimping. <clears throat> this is like never before seen kind of stuff. That guy is stoked. Look at that. That's the cover of the video. Are you kidding me? Now, the reason all this hail accumulated here in the bottom of the city here is probably not because it fell out of the sky. See how there's no hail up here? Uh, this is a low point in the city where it was pouring and hailing and it all flowed into this region. So all the hail flowed to here. So it's not just this much hail over hundreds of miles. This is like an area that got buried in hail because it all flowed here with the rain. Still, absolutely amazing. Equally amazing happening just the day before the most outrageous tornado ever seen in Allen, South Dakota. Look at that. That's like biblical. Who I can you imagine living in that house? Holy. I hope not. Mount Merapi pyroclastic flow happening today. I will give you the annoying noise. Let's do this. Okay. Maybe we should try shut that up. Shut it off. Shut me off. My God, that's annoying. Yes. Take a look. It does say pus down in the bottom left here. Pus right there. It's freaking me out. Mount Marapi, pyroclastic flow, Volcano YT. Give him a thumbs up. Tell him Diamond sent you and tell him to suck it. But also tell him the footage was excellent. Thank you, Volcano YT.
Seismic update. No quakes of note, except this quake of note. 4.2 in Pioche, Nevada. It almost looks like Pinochle and someone left out a few of the letters. That's what I was just thinking. It's crazy. We have some activity up in the Camp Chocta. Things are getting jiggy, folks. North Alaska much. Holy much. Worldwide volcano news update. No volcanoes of note, except this volcano of note. Yeah, it's called Popocatapetl. 26,000 feet. Multiple events over the last 48 hours. Hours of powers. Plus, we had Merapi's pyroclastic flow, which we just beeped through. Now, paper coming out two years ago is very significant. And it's the reason I'm doing the video tonight, which I wasn't going to do until tomorrow night. But we're doing it now because NASA's Van Allen probe spotted human-made barrier shrouding Earth. This paper came out May 17, 2017 from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Yeah. Humans have long been shaping Earth's landscape, but now scientists know that we also can shape our near space environment with radio communications, which in the last two years have been found to interact with particles in space. Yes, this is very significant. Why? Because we're headed into a magnetic reversal and this cosmic radiation Energized particles coming from space are going to be bombarding us, changing our DNA, culling millions, maybe even billions. But let's get back to the paper. Humans, well, a certain type of communications is very important here. It's called very low frequency or VLF. These are radio communications that we'll get to have been used by the military and nuclear subs and other applications, which did not really get off the ground until the 60s and 70s, which is after the astronauts went to the moon. Basically, when the pickup of VLF radio communications intensified what we're about to talk about. Now, very low frequency or VLF radio communications have been found to interact with particles in space. Are you spacing out? We're talking about the Van Allen belts. <coughs> Affecting how and where they move. At times, these interactions can create a barrier around Earth against natural high energy particles of radiation from space, like cosmic rays. These results, part of a comprehensive paper on human-induced space weather, were recently published in Space Science Reviews. Yeah, and I don't even have the correct second page because I have no idea where it was. So there you have it, kids. Now, there is a project called the Van Allen Probes, formerly the RBSP mission. Starting back 2012 there in November 2012, it was renamed. Now these probes are flying around the Van Allen belts and they will continue to do so year after year after year, all the way until we, uh, the magnetic reversal occurs and they crash back to Earth. But, <clears throat> the probes have noticed an interesting coincidence. The outward extent of the very low frequency bubble corresponds almost exactly to the inner edge of the Van Allen radiation belts. A layer of charged particles held in place get away, by Earth's magnetic fields. Dan Baker, director of the University of Colorado's Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics in Boulder, coined this lower limit the impenetrable barrier and speculates that if there were no human VLF transmissions, the boundary would likely stretch closer to Earth indeed. Now, what does this mean? Why do, why do I care so much? With further study, which means in the last two years, very low frequency transmissions may serve as a way to remove excess radiation from the near Earth environment, including cosmic rays. 
Plans are already underway to test very low frequency transmissions in the upper atmosphere to see if they could remove excess charged particles which can appear during periods of intense space weather or magnetic reversals or when no one's looking like right now. Are you picking it up? I just put it down. It was glorious and it looks like a Van Allen belt. Get your game up. Learn about the probes. Probe Uranus. It is a planet outside of Neptune. Where is it inside? Does anyone's guess where Uranus is? Now, back to the facts. Foreshock, bow shock, magnetosphere, Van Allen belts. Awesome words, awesome graphics. Do dab. Energetic charged particles. What we're talking about here in the form of the toroid and the torus or the double donut. God, I'm getting hungry. Space scientists use the term energetic charged particles to describe ions and electrons and other shit. The highest energy charged particles are the galactic cosmic rays. Yeah, babe, it's all the GCRs. Completely ionized atomic nuclei, completely going through your body, changing your DNA like boom time. And now let's talk about the very low frequency. It's like a hum. It's a band in the range of 3 to 30 kilohertz with wavelengths from 10 to 100 kilometers. You know what that means? It means very low frequency. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to come over here to the top secret information. These VLF communications transmitters use digital signals to communicate with submerged submarines at frequencies of 3 to 30 kilohertz. The 18 Trident submarines constitute half of the U.S. strategic nuclear capability. The supporting infrastructure for these submarines include connectivity links such as extremely low frequency or ELF, VLF, and Takamo. And I cannot reveal any more of my sources, unfortunately. What is my point? The point is... <laughs> stratospheric... Injection is not the way to go here as far as geoengineering. We can engineer space weather. And the very low frequency we're using for our nuclear fleet and the military and the government have been using since the late 60s and 70s has actually created a bubble. A bubble! Around the Earth protecting us from cosmic rays as they still increase here at the surface. Can you imagine if we hadn't been using those? It's anyone's guess. But it's my guess that the powers that be are probably charging up those Van Allen belts on purpose to save their arse. Check out the links below. Subscribe to the channel. Share this with like-minded people. We are not sheeple. But we are getting abused. Get the facts. Prepare now. Do it now. Do that.